my little person that I've been experimenting with and that I put stuff on is it's working really well. Can you see it right now? I'll do like I'm showing you makeup or something. Um, so I didn't do his hands yet because I didn't want to, um, it was like too messy to do the whole thing. But, and he's going to need another layer, but uh, everything so far, like he's definitely stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of mine and upload it to my, um, my Google slide. How's your guys' stuff looking? Okay. So by the end of today, you want to have a second person. It does not have to be, neither one of the people have to be completely finished, but you want them both to be like substantially, like they want to be far along enough that they look like people. Does that make sense? And then, um, so like mine, I have, hold on, where did I put my little person? So I have these two right now. And what I did with this one, there when I made them out of uh, paper, right? Out of a sticky note. Yeah, like a post-it note. So then um, yesterday I used flour and water just a little bit in a, um, a lid to make it like, did you ever make paste when you were a little kid out of glue or out of flour and water? But you did make paper mache with me, right? So kind of like that consistency, like, almost like cream, so very thin, but still a little bit goopy. So then I painted it onto my paper, just a thin layer so it wouldn't get too wet. And then I pressed tissue uh, toilet paper on it little by little. And then I took the paintbrush with a little bit more group over top. So basically it's paper mache, but on a small thin scale. Um, and I used the, paper, the, the paintbrush to kind of, and I'm gonna do it again today. Um, but it started to get where like when I would touch a wet part, it would start coming off. So I stopped and let it dry. So now I can handle it. Now I can do my hands and my head and add another layer. But I'm pretty stinking happy with it. So I'm going to photograph this and put this on my slide for like, you know how on the other one we had like, this is what it looks like when it's wet. This is what it looks like when it's dry. So I'm doing a pro progress photograph. And then for me, and this is like, I'm talking to all of you guys now. Um, for me, I think I might try to add a little bit more paper clay onto his arms and legs to make them a little longer. Or I might sand him. Do you think I should just leave his proportions the same and sand him down and start painting him? Or do you think I should try to adjust the proportions so his arms and legs are longer? What do you guys think? So then I think I'll play with sanding and making the, him um, smooth. And on this one today, I'm going to add, I'm going to finish the arms and the head. Like I'm probably going to build up the head sort of like you did yesterday. Because right now it's like a weird squiggle. So I'll probably form the head a little bit and then do finish that layer. And I think I'll be able to put a second layer on this. So it is essentially like a tiny, tiny paper mache project, this one. Whereas this one I used the mushed up. Uh, paper more like clay. Does that make sense? So that's basically what you guys are going to do. You should have two people by the end of the day, not finished, but kind of both in progress. Does that sound like a good goal to you guys? Does that seem like a reasonable and uh, like creative, good creative challenge for you? And if you guys ever feel like I'm going too slow or too fast, or if you have suggestions, again, we're kind of all creating this uh, experience together. So please let me know if you have suggestions, okay? And right now I have, I hook up the speakers again so that I can hear you guys. So when you're talking, she can hear you too. So. Do you want me to share my phone like I did yesterday so that you guys can see what I'm doing with my hands? So on mine, I'm gonna sand the first one down because it's like paper clay. And on the other one, I'm gonna build it up some more. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but just add more layers and shape the head a little bit more. I gotta say, I love them. I, I'm like excited every morning when I come in and see them.
Let's see. I'm going to set up my fancy um, tripod again. And then um, get myself set up. I think what I'm going to do for me is I'm going to do uh, a layer on this person first because it's going to need to dry. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the time sanding this and, and refining this one. I think I'm going to take a picture of both of them for like the pre to put on um, the Google slide now and then and then a post again today. All right. First, I'm going to pour myself a little bit of coffee. This coffee makes everything better. <laughs> and will you guys remind me, do you all, do you have paint at home? Let's see, phone. Pre, take a picture of each one first, like now, um, to put on the slides for like the before and then work on them throughout class and then take it after. So like, for instance, for me, <clears throat> I have my two started. This one, I didn't, I don't know if you remember that I didn't put any on here because I was afraid of breaking it until it dried. So now this part's dry. So I'm going to finish the, the hands and the head. Uh, like I'm probably going to form the head a little bit and then I'm going to put more of the flower um, paper mache stuff I did yesterday. And then I'm going to put a second coat on the body. because. But it is definitely working. Like it's starting to smooth out and be stronger now. And then when that's drying, then I'm going to spend the rest of the time sanding this down and smoothing it down and getting ready to paint it or add details. For that, before I really start painting, I'll probably mostly be sanding today. Before I start painting it, I'm going to figure out exactly what object I really want it to interact with because that might depend on the style of clothes I make for it. So. Let's see, I'm joining with my phone now. I turn off my microphone. I'm gonna get my little um, my little cassette tape and put it in there for the picture. Yeah, I forgot. So if you haven't taken your before picture, do that because I totally forgot. So I'm doing it right now. Well, and I guess, I mean, maybe this will be interesting for you to see what it looks like before I take my picture. Now his foot's getting a little bit bigger. Let's see, I think he was like this. There we go. Here's me taking a picture. And so just since I'm sharing my screen anyway, like if I took it like this, do you see how it's not a, it's not really showing off my little character? But if I go like this, it looks a lot better. Mm -hmm. I took that, that's my before. And then I already have a before of this one, but I'm gonna take another one. And also, I don't know if y'all's camera works the same way, but do you see how there's too much light on him right now? He's like blown out. So if I tap on them, then I'm going to be able to see the details a little bit more. Tap on them. Find a good angle. There we go. The other thing is you want to make sure you're if you don't already know, like, do you see how you can see the shadow of my phone in the picture right now? I want to find a place that I can take the picture where I won't have that. There we go. I like that. Okay. Now I'll set up my little air quote uh, tripod.
And I'm going to get my flour out. And I think I'm going to mix my um, flour in a, in a bottle cap today. So if you are using, like, you're using the flour and water, right? I think you're going to find it, like, the second day is always a little easier than the first day because it's like got a little layer that's already sort of hard. So let's see. I'm using the, this little, uh, so the only thing I might possibly mess up is too much water. So I'm gonna try to be very careful. Just a little bit in there. And then add some flour. I'm kind of liking this this little demo setup. Not quite YouTube, but kind of. So, I think I need a little bit more water. Like a, it's uh. It's good, but it, for the size of what I'm doing, it's a little, do you see how it's like a little bit goopy? So I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny little, I'm probably just gonna use the water with my fingers to get just a little bit more. Cause it's just such a small bit that it doesn't take much. Yeah, that's better. It's a little drippy. Before I do that, put that off to the side. Um, I got to figure out, and I want my hands to be dry while I'm doing this, but I got to figure out what I want to do for my head. I think I'm going to fill in this little spot so it's rounder. You guys think so? So yeah, you see how it's kind of like, like, I think if I fill in this little area, then that might feel like a head, do you think? All right, we're going to try it. And I'm just going to use tissue or toilet paper, I think, to do that with. Again, because it's thin and flexible. And, um, and I know that you hadn't done um, paper mache before, so you might not. I'll tell you this little tip that I think everybody else already knows. If you are doing paper mache, it works better to tear your toilet paper or whatever you're using instead of to cut it. Because then the rough edges blend in better. Because if you cut it, then you have these lines like of where you where everything is cut and you can see it. So since I'm sitting at my desk uh, to teach, which as you know is not my usual way of teaching, um, I have to have everything within reach of me. So I have all of this strange assortment of things 
But it's also making it hard for me to, like, I don't know where my other yarn or thread was, so I'm using a new thread. But I'm going to wrap this little extra piece in there with thread like I did the first one. Scooch this out of the way. Um, did I ever show you the video of the man who made uh, a dragon out of paper mache and he had a pet cat at the end? I might show that to you guys one day. It's a it's a it's a setup video, so it just shows him making a dragon head, um, and it's super cool. The cat's just at the end, like when he's like doing his closing credits. Yeah, so mostly it's him making, but he's just using tape and paper mache, like a lot of the same supplies that a lot of you guys are using. Um, to make this amazing dragon. So I think, and this is kind of what you were doing with the string to form your uh, first little person, right? We will not speak of it. <laughs> well, remember, it's an experiment. So we might come up with, a lot of times I'll keep stuff around and then later on realize, oh, you know what else I could do with it though? I'm adding another little piece on the other side of this head so that I can balance it out a little bit. And then I'm going to tie it around after that. And then I'm going to put another layer of paper mache on it. Try to tie this in a knot to pull it tighter now. <laughs> I'm on this um, Facebook group of art teachers that um, are always sharing ideas especially since we're in such a strange predicament this year. And somebody posted a picture of Tanaka's artwork and said they thought it would be fun to do. And I was like, oh, we're doing that right now. So it's a little rounder now. I'm gonna refine it. Can you tell that there's progress? So I think I'm gonna take this extra little tail of thread and wrap it a few more times. But I think this is gonna work nicely.
And I can always add more like layers with the paper mache too. Okay, I think that's good. And now I'm going to try to tie it. Do y'all ever do other things while you make art? Like watch a movie or anything, or do you just make art? Yeah, that's what I usually do too. Yeah, I usually, if I have a big project or something that's going to take a long time, um, I like to have like something that is interesting, but not so interesting that I have to stop working to watch it. <laughs> All right, now I have a head that I'm pretty pleased with. Can you guys see it? Not too shabby. Now I'm gonna add my paper mache layer. <clears throat> um, can you see what I'm doing right now? So this is what I did last uh, yesterday was I would add a thin layer of this thin flour and water, but you could use um, glue also, um, like thin down glue. Um, I just use flour just to, to show that you can. And so then I put a layer, but thin so that it's not damaging my paper. Although if you have tin foil, then you don't have to worry so much. And then, so I'm basically creating a skin for it. Yes. It's like uh, movie props for a little tiny person. Uh-uh. Is it a horror movie? <laughs> I'll have to. Well, I would say I have to watch it, but... When I was younger, I loved horror movies, and now they kind of freak me out. <laughs> I don't know why, though, like because I used to watch them obsessively when I was y'all's age. Um, yeah, I'll have to watch it. Did you know, well, obviously you didn't know because I didn't tell you, but when I was um, in high school, 
Have you guys, you guys seen the the uh, Freddy Krueger movies, right? I saw the 3D one in the theater when I was in high school. I still have, like, I have a little memory book from high school, and I still have, like, the 3D glasses from that. Oh, yeah. I think maybe that's why horror movies are so fun because they're like, you're purposely scaring yourself. And the other thing we decided yesterday is that I should keep this little flappy arm because we think it's cute. So instead of having a hand, he's going to have this little flapper. And I think... I'm, I added one thin layer and I'm not going to add any more because I can tell it's trying to untwist the arm. So I'm going to let that dry before I add another layer to the arm. And I'm gonna, so I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to add more to the hands and another layer to the rest of the body. And I'll probably find that, and I think I'm even going to take my toilet paper and split it into... It's like two ply, which is very surprising because it's school toilet paper. <laughs> uh, but the more layers I put on, the easier it's going to be and the uh, sturdier and the smoother it will be. And I'm making sure to across parts, like connector parts. So like where the body and the arms connect, I'm making a smooth transition now uh, so that it starts to feel all connected. Let's see, we would watch, what did we watch? We watched all the Freddy movies, all the Nightmare. Uh, I mean, um, the, what are the Jason ones? Friday the 13th, Pinhead, Chucky, Pet Cemetery. Did you guys ever see Pet Cemetery? And then again, um, as a reminder for those of you who have done paper mache and for new information, do you see how I have this toilet paper right here going across this opening? So to make it so it will wrap, the best thing to do smoothly um, is just like break it in the corner there. Um, and then that way it's like naturally fitting around the corner. And that's better than like tearing a tiny piece is just to break it where it wants to bend.
I remember when I was little, I mean, I had to have been very small, like elementary school. So maybe around 10 and our babysitter, a uh, babysitter, um, was watching a scary movie. <laughs> and, and, but I don't even think it was like, like those kind. I think it was like maybe an old, uh, vampire movie or something. But I remember my mom was not pleased. I think I got to move and turn on the lights. It's very dark in here today. Let's see, I'm going to tear off a little of this extra. Is this called a pirouette, what my little person's doing? Oh. Isn't that called a pirouette where you like, I mean, I, I've not ever done it, but. Where you stand on your tippy toes and do a little spin. I'm just going to do a little bit more on this leg, one more layer on this leg, and then I'm going to let it dry some more. Can you guys hear me when I hum to myself?
there. Can you guys tell that there's any progress from the beginning of class to now? Smoother, that's what I was thinking too. So I'm not, this is two layers on the bottom and then one layer on the top. And I'm not gonna add more because I want it to dry and get strong and then I'll add more on Monday. But I'm very pleased. I'm gonna set it aside for a little while and do a little sanding on my um, other person. Now, and then again, uh, you could, if it's just a, a bottle lid, you could just, uh -oh. if it's just a bottle lid, you can just throw it away. Or if you want to save it, just take your extra toilet paper, paper towel, wipe out the extra, and then rinse it out. Um, but I'm also going to just move this stuff out of the way. And now I'm going to work on sanding this down a little bit. So what I have is just some thin sandpaper. And I'm going to tear a little piece off. And then fold it. I'm going to kind of bend it around a little bit so it's sort of flexible. I think that will help. So what I did is I just took a little strip of the sandpaper and wrapped it around my finger. So I can gently sand it. And do you guys see how I'm supporting the whole, like with the part that I'm support the, that I'm gonna sand, I'm supporting it so I don't break it. And I'm going to see how this turns out. It actually looks like it's going smooth. My backup plan is to put uh, a thin layer of toilet paper over it. And I'm done. Or maybe just a thin layer of paste with no paper.
Do you guys know if you can watch me just for a second? So if you see, I'm kind of, I'm going like this to gently sand it. And then I'm going like this with my finger. Does anybody know why I'm doing that with my finger? Everybody give me a guess why I'm doing that with my finger after I sand a little bit. Yes, exactly. Because with sculpting, sometimes it's like big construction type stuff and sometimes it's seeing how it feels. Does anybody know why I have this wrapped around my finger instead of like around a pencil or something? Or have a guess? Do you have a guess why I have it wrapped around my finger instead of around a pencil? Because it's easier. Yep, that's one thing. Um, any other guesses? There's a few reasons why. Think about how my thumb feels versus how a pencil feels. See if you can take a guess. Right, exactly, because my thumb is curved. And so I can fit into those spots. And also my thumb is softer, right? So I can feel if I'm pushing too hard and I can kind of fit into those curves, like you said. So I can fit into the curves and I can also tell if I'm pushing too hard or not. And then I'm using my fingers like that to see if the texture is good. So we're developing sensitivity to materials. I would say about five more minutes, then let's photograph our prog progress and put it in our slides. Does that sound like a good plan? So we'll do more I'm going to take a couple different angles of this just in case. I don't know if the texture change is going to show up, but I'm going to try to get it. Mostly worked on the back side. So if you haven't already stopped, go ahead and stop and photograph 
your work from today? Um, I said, if you haven't already, go ahead and stop and photograph your work for today and upload it to our, our Google slide. Oh, good. All right. I'm going to upload mine as soon as I finish my picture. I'm going to try to take a real close up one so you can see the texture. Oh, I forgot I added the head too, so I want to show that in detail. Oh, I'm gonna do a time lapse. I am going to stop sharing my screen and upload this now. I also just moved the leg a little bit because it looked like it had, I'm going to take another picture because it, it looked to me like it was a little bit less, the position wasn't quite what I wanted, so I repositioned it again. And I am taking the best picture ever right now. Okay. Put it over here to dry. I will check your if it's all labeled and everything, then you'll be good to go. Oh, look. Is that a little um, styrofoam ball? Awesome. Let me get these things all closed out here a second. Um, and let's see, new mini person. Nice. Nice. All right, let me mark this down. Um, <clears throat> what do you think of them so far, too? Your proportions look really good, too. Like they look person-y. So that was one eleven, two eleven. This is two twelve. So we're just adding on every time. And the kind of the grading rhythm I've been in lately is I'm giving you two grades for each day: one for conversation and talking and brainstorming and stuff, and then one for the images. Does that make sense to you?
like class discussion grade and a artwork grade. So uh, do you need anything or uh, any questions for me? Right, we'll have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you Monday. Anybody else ready for me to check theirs? I am uploading mine now. Actually, I have my cord. I might just use that. Uh, are you photographing yours? You, did you take your pictures? Okay, good. Did you put them up already? Good. Did you label them? What's that? Okay. Then I'll check it. Okay, good. So let's see. So let's see. You did. Oh, so you added some more form and tape and legs too, right? Is this D? Is this a um? This is a second person. So you have the one with the the, um, the wire and the tinfoil on the side, and then this one is the paper and tape person. Awesome. And you got the date, and you said what it is. All right, that looks great. All right, have a wonderful weekend. And you have this is your wire person, and he's he's sitting down too, isn't he? Nice. And then um, you have your other one at home, right? Okay, cool. So on this one, will you just say um, what it is made out of? Add that to your slide. And then are you photographing yours right now? And so just write that in your note. So if you kind of look at, if you see, let's see, where's mine? I haven't added mine today yet. I'm still uploading it, but like here, I, I said the day and the day, what it's made out of. And then I, in parentheses, I said what I did. So you can do that. So you can close up your um, Chromebook and stuff and go ahead and wipe down your desk. <laughs> so you're going you're gonna to need to add the, on the slides, have one slide for yesterday and one slide for today, okay? If it's going to take a minute for you to up, you know, for your to send it to yourself, then you can just send me an email when you have those things done. Can you actually send me a screenshot too when you when you have them uploaded onto your uh, slides? All right, sounds good. Have a great weekend. Thank you. And I gotta upload mine.